Hello everyone and welcome to the extended Grimforge fight. Now I've been reading a lot of y'all's comments lately on my old Grimforge two minute mechanic video from back when all this was brand new. And I admit it, it may sound a bit dated, but those mechanics are still pretty accurate today. Now, before we get started on this extended in-depth fight video, I wanna make two things very clear. There are two mechanics you need to worry about when fighting this thing. One, it has a threat targeting system. The last person or thing to attack it, it will chase after and it will attempt to attack it. The second thing you need to remember is that when it's standing in lava, it gains a debuff known as superheated. Whenever it's superheated, it will last for two rounds whenever it steps out of the lava. And of course, this means it is now vulnerable to certain types of damage, and it will also take double damage from bludgeoning weapons. And now for the lineup that I've chosen for this fight, we're gonna have Gale manning the lever and taking care of all of the magma methods that spawn during the fight. We're gonna have my main hunter handle extra add damage as well, and also shooting the valve lever to get the lava activated, as well as applying debuffs whenever possible. And then we're gonna have Lyzel dealing the bait damage, and then we're gonna have Shadowheart as support and healing. Now, before we get things started, if you have defensive spells, definitely use them before the fight starts. Prep time is your biggest ally during this fight if you can manage it. And then we're gonna have my main character activate the fight with the lava. Now, as you can see, as soon as it comes out, it has superheated already on it, meaning you can hurt it right away. Now, you have to be very careful about the order that you attack this thing. This way you can make the most of everything that you have. We're gonna start off by having Gale come over and apply True Strike. Getting advantage on your attacks and giving it disadvantage on its attacks are the best thing you can do because the more buffs and debuffs you stack up, the faster this fight will go. We will have my character apply Bone Shield for a disadvantage if possible. Looks like it's not gonna happen. And then throw on Hunter's Mark for good measure. Now, she is gonna line wait over here to help with the adds here in a moment. Let's this. We are now going to have our girls jump over here. And now that they're in position, we're going to get its attention. And now it should walk over to us. There we go. Now Shadowheart did step in the lava for a moment, so I'm going to need her to heal herself. Now, here's the tricky part. Whenever its foot is on the edge like this, you have about a 50-50 chance of the crucible hitting or missing. So I highly recommend taking an extra round just to get it up on the platform. So during this in-between round, we're gonna do what we can to keep applying debuffs, get out of its way if possible. We'll come back over here. We'll have Bone Chill applied one more time. It is not happening, that's fine. Gale can reapply True Strike to refresh the duration. And then we'll just have Lyzel do her thing. And just squeeze her back over for a moment. Now see, as annoying as that is, he has a whole foot on top of the crucible panel. So now we can give it a try. But we need to make sure that our girls are safe first. So let's get Shadowheart healed once again because she likes to step in the lava. She's not in aggro range, so we can have her walk down real quick. Same with Lyzel. Oh, looks like she is in range, so we'll have to take that risk. She is healthy enough to take the hit. And thankfully, Gale is there with a portent dice. So now that they're out of the way, we will tell Gale to pull the lever. And he is now knocked prone. Now, the thing about this is, as soon as you do this, superheated is removed. 
Whether you have two rounds or one round, it will be removed immediately and you can no longer hurt it. However, just because it's prone for two turns doesn't mean it's going to stay down for two turns, so you're going to need to act quickly. As things stand, we're going to have Gale move into position. Our girls can move back onto the platform. And if you have a chance to heal, you really should do it. And now, if you can, give it a hit, but it looks like it's not going to happen. So we can put our attention on the methods. But it looks like from here, we can have Wiesel hit the lava. Now, sadly, it looks like it's technically not touching it, so you're gonna need to kite it to get it back into the lava. You really have to pay attention to make sure the debuff is actually on there. So what we're gonna do now is We'll have her jump over here, get her into position, and use her multi-attack to get another hit on it. Threat assessment has moved to Lysel, so now we can end the turns. Health. Alas, it has used Awaken. It really is annoying when it does use it, but it just means you have to waste another round to do what you need to do. So we'll get it hit one more time. That was a miss. Multi-attack really helps in these situations. There we go, threat assessment is moving once more. Lazel, just keep healing yourself because you like to step in the lava. And now we can have our two girls, <laughs> Gale and my MC, take over the Mephits. Two more down. Gale, let's get you a little closer. And then one big magic missile should do the trick. All right, and now all of the ads have been taken care of. They do explode if they're in your face, so I highly recommend using ranged attacks to kill them. So now he's walking over to the threat. Now you do run the risk of getting slammed because of his walking distance, but it is a risk you have to take to get it to move and hit the lava. So as you see, it is superheated. We need to get its advantage one more time. Now, sadly, that was a miss, but my ranger over here can give it a hit as well. All right, threat assessment has been changed. Give another hit for good measure. Oh, Gale. Why do y'all insist on touching the lava? Make sure you're really careful about where you click to walk because auto pathing is not your friend. Get true strike back on the target. And let Lysel wait it out. Aha, now we have him entirely on the platform for him to be hit. He is still superheated, so to the detriment of my allies right here, Gale, pull the lever. And there we have it. Big bad evil dude is destroyed. Our friends are nice and healthy. They have stood up. The lava is gone. And now you can collect your loot and make some cool adamantine items. Still breathing, despite everything. Now, depending on the luck of your rolls, this fight can either take twice as long or it can take twice as less. 
It can go very quick or very long depending on how it behaves. When I first did this, I actually got really, really lucky and it took me half the time than this video did. But for the most part, this is how your fight should go more or less. You need to make sure you can handle the methods. If they get in your face, they will be problematic. If they spam heat metal, that can be problematic as well. But the main thing to worry about is to make sure you're kiting the boss correctly and making sure you get two smacks from the crucible and it'll go down right away. And that is it for this video. This is the extended fight for the Grim Forge final boss fight. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel down below. Until next time, everyone, stay safe out there.